everybody welcome to los angeles italia as you can see we are uh, overviewing uh, some uh, footage coming from uh, la live uh, downtown where uh, actually this year is gonna take place uh, most of the program of the oscar in front of the past where normally everything was focused in hollywood at the dolby theater this year the oscar will be celebrated and assigned here in downtown at union station for um, having uh, a, the possibility to have uh, so many people in safety uh, they are they have a strict protocol for the covid and so they are uh, uh, really um, looking after all the people who is allowed to be uh, in the show of course uh, it won't be the only place uh, union station downtown la but uh, we will the, the oscar will also take place into the um, amazing museum, the Academy Museum that the architect Renzo Piano, we're very proud that in Italian has been in charge to make uh, the new incredible museum of the uh, Academy and actually in this museum, my dear Daniel McVicker, uh, we, we, we see yes. it now outside on Wilshire Boulevard, uh, Savara uh, building that was a uh, uh, the one of the building that composed the museum, Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, Art and Science. So uh, is uh, taking place by an Italian. Here in uh, the Academy of, um, Museum will be some performances included. Uh, Laura Pausini who will perform her EOC scene written with uh, Diane Warren and uh, um, Nicolo Ayardi, not Daniel. No, this, this, this is uh, thank you, Pascal, and it's great to be here with you uh, in our uh, virtual uh, Hollywood, but also seeing those picture, beautiful pictures from Los Angeles. Union Station, where it, it will take place, the, the actual ceremonies, was also historically the place where many people arrived in the 1930s, the 1940s, with their suitcase in hand to be a star in Hollywood. I came by car personally, but that was the historically the place, so it's really beautiful that they're doing the Oscar ceremony there in these difficult times. Uh, the, the former May Company building that Renzo Piano uh, has redesigned and made it just a beautiful place is a, a, a splendid uh, venue for these beautiful songs, particularly the quality from that, well, I'm speaking Italian, that <laughs> Mauro Pausini, who, who will be here. But at the uh, Chinese theater, uh, there, there's also the Dolby the Theater, and the, the Dolby Theater will have a public of uh, first responders, uh, the, the nurses, the doctors, the people that have been really doing the front lines uh, against this virus, COVID, uh, they've given the seats to them with uh, certainly all the safety precautions, there, uh, but they'll be at the Dolby Theater enjoying uh, the Oscars. But we're also at the Chinese Theater. The Los Angeles Italia Festival is at the Chinese Theater showing live films, showing films in the cinema all week this week, Italian films as we have. Yes, absolutely. And we are very proud uh, uh, today that at four o'clock, uh, uh, Pietro Castellitto uh, movie, The Predators. Uh, Pietro Castellitto is a new and talented uh, director and actor uh, will open and to, to follow, uh, uh, we're going to have uh, an Italian-American celebration. You know, it's all about uh, friendship between Italy and America and also Italian American. And we're going to show the comeback trial by George Gallo starring Robert De Niro. What a, a magic uh, combination. And uh, after to follow, to close the, this today's program in Chinese theater, Bad Tales, uh, directed by Fabio and Damiano Di Innocenzo. So this is an amazing program. We are very proud because we are trying to push up again Italian cinema. And uh, this is very important because uh, the um, show business and the movie industry and the audiovisual industry involve a lot of employees. Now, as you have in America, my dear Daniel, the MPAA that I know because of uh, the wonderful Jack Valenti, who is uh, <laughs> one of the person that inspired me Capri Hollywood Festival in 1995. In Italy, we have Annika, and we are very honored today to have with us the president of uh, the Italian industry of uh, uh, cinematic art, uh, uh, President um, Francesco Rutelli. Uh, good afternoon, President. Hello, President. Ciao, everybody. Ciao, everybody. I don't, I don't think uh, my good friend Charlie Rifkin would agree 
on this comparison between uh, ANICA and MPAA, but I, I, I accept it molto volentieri. Why, why you don't uh, like the comparison? So explain no, he, what is the difference between MPAA and ANICA, please. He wouldn't, because there is a very small difference between the, the dimension of the two organizations. But I'm joking, because we're good friends and we, we talk each other and we appreciate each other. And I, I got a great question for you. Uh, I see the image uh, of Chinese theater behind you, but, uh, and I, but I've, I've seen some live uh, images. Is, is, is it cloudy in Los Angeles? It's always sunny, always blue skies and golden sunshine. Now this is, a, this is a Neapolitan uh, uh, way to be <laughs> Los Angelino. It's uh, in the early in the morning, as it was that this is coming from, it's very cloudy. Sometimes you can even, it looks like being in Valpadana. So it's <laughs> it yeah. up and open. President uh, Rutelli, we are talking about the importance to give a new life, uh, to, to live uh, the new res renaissance of uh, the cinema industry. You are in charge of, for uh, all the Italian uh, companies producing. So what is the situation like right now? The situation is a, a two phases medal, uh, meaning that uh, theatrical is in a deep crisis as everywhere in the world, even if in America uh, things are moving. Uh, in, in, in Italy, the situation will restart uh, on, in three days' time, when uh, uh, theaters will reopen gradually uh, at, at the very, at the, after one and more year of uh, deep, deep, deep troubles. Uh, at the, the, the other phase is very positive. We work hard in order to assure that production uh, can uh, proceed and, and grow, and, and that happened really. Italy was uh, among the countries in the world where uh, production set uh, went on and went on very, very brilliantly, also due to a severe control for health, and safety for everybody due to an agreement we established with uh, all the all the partners in productions. I think that allowed, for instance, only in my city, the city of Rome, to have 230 sets, production sites, uh, during the months of March. So it's uh, astonishing, positive. And I want also uh, allow me to add my congratulations to my good friend Renzo Piano for the, the job he's doing for the new uh, museum in Los Angeles. He, he wrote me a, 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 a un biglietto, a, a message saying that he misses friends like every one of us. And I hope uh, you will enjoy the presence of Renzo Piano when they will inaugurate this new museum. Yes, uh, President, it's a magic moment for Italian cinema uh, and for the Italian uh, music because of uh, Laura Pausini singing a song who's very favorite to, the, to win the Academy Award and also for uh, uh, the um, people that work uh, in uh, custom design uh, is a tradition and this time is a uh, the time of uh, Massimo Cantini Parrini, nominated for the cousin of uh, Pinocchio, and also for also her makeup and her style, of, and another big tradition after Bertolazzi and Gregorini, that recently won the Oscar for Suicide Score. We, we have this year nominated uh, Dalia Colli and Francesco Pegoretti for Pinocchio again. But uh, these are two examples of the vitality of the Italian industry of uh, cinema and of show business, no, President Rutelli? Absolutely, I do agree. And first of all, I want to thank you, Pascal, for the, the work you're doing. You continue uh, to make in Los Angeles uh, to, to be a bridge, a fantastic bridge be between Italy and the States, Italy and Los Angeles, Italy and Hollywood. Uh, I can also mention the fact that a few days ago, 
our culture minister Dario Franceschini passed a bill allowing to double uh, the Cinecittà studios and venues. That is very important. That is a uh, competitive opportunity for our industry that can allow us to revive what was called the Hollywood on the Tiber River. I think it's a very, very good potential and uh, something that, as, as the president of Anika, you know maybe that in Anika you got not only the, the, the major, the studios, as part historically, but recently also we welcome uh, Netflix and other important uh, international leaders like Viacom, CBS, uh, many people in, in, the, in the international uh, world of cinema and uh, audiovisual uh, consider the opportunity to establish some production or even some hub, productive hub in Italy and maybe in Cinecittà. Uh, Presidente, I, I, I know that you've always been, a, been advocating for certainly more investment, uh, organizing the tax credits early and organizing the tax credits well. Uh, to both attract productions and stimulate production here. And you've also noted in the past that Italy at one point, uh, uh, well, let me just put it this way, Alabama and Georgia, as you had noted in the past, have doubled the budget as incentives to bring people to those small states than Italy. What is the situation like now? The situation is improving because uh, uh, the government, the parliament, also under our contribution proposal, uh, were able to nearly double the, the funding for cinema and audiovisual. And I think it's a positive development, an opportunity that uh, can help both uh, the theatrical and the new relation uh, that is threefold. Theaters, we want and we will uh, uh, not only save, but relaunch in our country, uh, the broadcasting system and co-productions, and the new platforms that are changing hugely the international panorama. I think Italy is, uh, is ready, this dialogue is open, and I think we have to be optimistic. President Rutelli, um, in, in recently uh, we uh, discovered that uh, the platforms are not the devil uh, because uh, I mean if just for the pandemic many people found uh, a solution to spend uh, their time uh, watching movies uh, different uh, opportunities uh, through other devices uh, than, than television so um, last year uh, and a, f a few years ago um, the platforms were, were considered the devils even from the academy now it seems that uh, is acceptable that uh, online uh, movies uh, uh, compete with uh, theatrical movies? I think it must be a convergence, not, uh, not a war. Also, be, also because uh, customers uh, want to choose and can choose and can have uh, uh, alternatives that have not to uh, destroy the, our, our wealth in terms of theatrical. I think uh, Anika, our association, was the, the first and lonely and the only one in the world uh, after MPAA uh, accepting Netflix to discuss, to have a dialogue and to contribute uh, to create a common platform in the interest of the industry and of customers. I'm optimistic, as I said, because uh, new, uh, uh, if, I, if I see, allow me to say Disney, Disney was part of Anika since a long time as a distributor of American films, international films in our theaters. Today, Disney uh, dramatically changed its business model and I think uh, that will be part of our common dialogue and uh, uh, creation of new opportunities and I think uh, today uh, as somebody said content is king yes content is absolutely 
king and the, the very place where content uh, can, can be can be seen uh, are various and the, the duty uh, for the industry is to make the different potentiality uh, in a dialogue constructive in a common interest. And in, uh, in speaking of common interest now, uh, because uh, we're, we're here with friendship and art for the Los Angeles Italia Festival, but it's also business. And business is a two-way street. Certainly, uh, you want to attract uh, uh, international productions, often Hollywood productions here to Italy. Uh, but now with, the, with the, the different platforms, there's also an opportunity for Italian new product to be created that can be seen all over the world instantly. Um, how, are you, how is Annika getting involved with that in terms of both support and advice? I would just quote an article that uh, was on the Wall Street Journal today or yesterday uh, under, under the headline streaming wars lead to shows born abroad. What does it mean? It means that uh, uh, everybody working in the streaming service uh, know, know, knows very well that you have to take care of the uh, customer in the different countries. And the productions made in various countries can reach uh, people everywhere in the world. I think it's very important. We must protect and enhance theatrical and at the same time the industry, the value chain is unified and I think it's growing because again content is king. Uh, President Rutelli, a few days ago we realized that in America uh, there, there are not um, a good uh, energy in front of Italy. So uh, we, we uh, have the feeling that uh, the government, also the uh, institution like uh, the cinema industry, uh, Anika, uh, should uh, do more to make understand that uh, we are not uh, in such a bad situation and uh, they can uh, Pro, pro, um, uh, imagine to spend uh, some of their time in Italy for the next uh, summer. What's your opinion? I, I really hope so. I think we, we are part of a world crisis. Pandemic is, a, is a absolutely a universal crisis. And of course, it's very difficult to, to see a partial solution. Uh, we need vaccine, we need uh, global vaccination if we do want to restart traveling, tourism and uh, business tourism. Uh, I think Italy will be ready. We got a new government, we got a, a new prime minister, Mario Draghi, who's uh, deeply respected all over the world, is an is a absolutely uh, renowned leader not only for the economy but also for his humanistic approach that is italy is a is a man uh, i know very well uh, a man uh, who comes from my city rome uh, a good friend but uh, overall he's a, a man who has been appreciated uh, for his skill his competence financial and today institutional and political, he will welcome people from America, he will welcome people from our country, uh, 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 friends, uh, the, the countries where uh, our, our Italian friendship really is rooted. And what, 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 what more than America? I want to remember to you to, uh, to your attention, that the very city where you, you, you are, Los Angeles, uh, brings the name from an Italian city, uh, because the, the, the very name of Los Angeles is uh, uh, Nuestra Señora, La Reina de Los Angeles de la Porciuncula. That is the Spanish original name where, when the Franciscan uh, sailors arrived in this in this place 
and gave to this place, this great city where you are, the name of the place where San Francesco, San Francis, uh, lived and died. La porciuncola di, uh, degli angeli, uh, di very close to Assisi and uh, Perugia in the, the, the heart, nel cuore dell'Italia. So never, never forget how many things link Italy to the United States. When you go to the Congress, you see the frescoes, you see the sculptures, you see the architecture, the symbol, the very symbol coming from Italy, from Rome, from our tradition, and that is the uh, rock over the rock over the our friendship is built. Uh, the, the, uh, thank you, Presidente. And that touches me as a Los Angeline, uh, Los Angelino. Um, the, the, the problem, though, right now is in the United States, some people are hesitant. All the Americans want to come here. They're all captivated by Stanley Tucci's travels and his tour of all the food uh, capitals here in Italy. And they're hungry for Italy right now. But they're also getting a mixed message from the, their own State Department which is saying, the United States State Department is saying, Italy, we're not so sure right now uh, uh, for uh, COVID, also for terrorism, which surprised me. Uh, so what can be done to overcome this hesitancy, both in the short term, meaning the next month or two for this summer, and in the longer term over the next year? Oh, I think in the medium long term, it won't be a problem. In the short term, I'm confident in the very next weeks, uh, from Italy, we will be able to send a clear message that the situation uh, is becoming under control, that we will have a green pass for people uh, vaccinated, a green pass for people able to travel safely with their families and to manage their businesses and to explore the fantastic experience of Italy, its beauty, its territories, uh, landscape, cities. We, 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 and I hope also that the Venice Film Festival, beginning of September, uh, can be an, uh, an opportunity uh, when and where dozens of people from the American film industry and also people coming to attend, coming to, to participate and see films. Like last year, we had an excellent experience with tens of thousands of people attending in the theaters in Venice with no, no contagion, no health uh, issues. And I think this year that will go even better. Uh, President Rutelli, last question. You've been uh, in your career Vice Premier, you've been Minister of Culture, you've been uh, uh, mayor of Roma, um, you have uh, had such an important uh, rules and uh, even more maybe in the future. What is the lesson that you personally received by this unexpected pandemic? That we are part of an integrated world. There, is not, uh, there are no places uh, to escape, like for climate change. What happened yesterday with the World Summit uh, when Joe Biden, uh, somebody I met many times in my life, um, and I, I respect, appreciate uh, the new president of the United States because I, I know him, but also because any, pri any president of the United States is and will be a friend for my country and for us, I think that uh, in Italy we, we, are, we are ready, we are ready to, to be part of this international community, uh, looking at the future with more awareness. If uh, COVID-19 started, it is all, it's also because we destroyed some of the common goods in terms of nature, in terms of preservation of a uh, ecological balance. I think what happened yesterday with the uh, international engagement, led by the United States to fight 
the consequences and to prevent the consequences of climate change is also a consequence of COVID because we do know that we must work together. Thank you so much, uh, President Rutelli. It was a, a joy to talk with you. And now let's go back uh, to Los Angeles with Thank some uh, uh, interviews and B-roll we, we did yesterday. Thank you. No. I'm very, very happy to be here tonight for two main reasons. The, the, the first one is because I think this is a very good hope for Italians because uh, I, I came here in, in, in LA on January 18 and uh, when I w as soon as I arrived basically it was everything closed and uh, I was not able to 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 take to, to go to it anywhere I, I to, uh, you, you can only hit uh, via via takeaway so in the end now we are only in April and thanks for the all of the vaccine program we are basically here almost the life is almost back to normal it's not normal but almost back to normal and um, and I'm so happy about that because uh, now by celebrating here in Italy Italians can see this and uh, and it basically can be a good hope for the future of Italy I'm very confident that uh, before the end of the, the summer life will be maybe 85 percent back to normality and um, and also I'm two times happy this year because um, because this year at the Oscar, Italians are absolutely a protagonist, one of the protagonists, because as you know, we have uh, um, Diane Warren wrote a beautiful song, and uh, she's a candidate, and, and our, our amazing Laura Pausini is the singer, and then we have, of course, Eduardo, and then we have, of, of course, uh, Pinocchio. So I'm very happy because Italians this year are very strong, and uh, I'm proud to be an Italian, and um, I hope I will have the chance more and more and more to, to, rep to represent Italian. I'm sorry I don't live anymore in Italy, but I, I come often. So thank you. There is no question whatsoever that I feel much more Italian than American. Uh, America is where I live, America is where my kids are being raised, but in my blood, every, every cell in my body is an Italian-made cell. You know, I think that what you learn gr growing up in such a creative environment is that creativity is born from work, hard work, concentration, discipline, preparation, and all of this so that when you're there on the day, you can be free and create something magical. But that magic and that freedom is something that you've got to earn. It doesn't just come. And it comes through, through work. And this is what my parents taught me. I don't really like to talk about messages of movies because hopefully when you see the movie, you get your own message. But I think that what is important for me is to write, direct, and tell stories that deal with issues of compassion, hope, humanity, disenfranchisement. I think it's very important nowadays to shine a light on all those people who have lived in the shadow of their prejudices. Because we all deserve to be seen. We all deserve to be heard. We all deserve love, dignity and empathy. Yeah, well, it was his first movie, and uh, the trick was to find somebody who had the heart and the soul of Momo, somebody who had that humanity. And in uh, Ibrahim Gueye, I found that in spades. He was a very, he is a very talented uh, young man, but even more than that, he's serious. He's diligent. He takes this job seriously. He prepares himself. And all of these things were key in order for him to be able to pull out such a performance his first time around. I am, I am reading, I am writing, and uh, as soon as I'll know, people will know. <laughs> well, there are a lot of wonderful movies this year, I think. You know, uh, The Trial of Chicago 7 is absolutely fantastic. Mank is a really, really beautiful movie. Um, Nomadland is amazing. Francis McDormand in Nomadland has really pulls out the a truly 
spectacularly enlightened uh, performance. Uh, I'm a big fan. So there are many, many wonderful movies. Ciao, Pascal. We miss you so much. We miss your smile. We miss your laugh. We miss your tux. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this without you. I'm not quite sure it's going to be as special as it normally is when your aura, when your energy is here. But we'll give it a shot. And hi to everybody from this amazing festival. And uh, we miss you and see you soon. <laughs>
and all the fans of the film festival, we are back. We're going to be back even bigger and stronger this year. Uh, we will do Ischia, we will do Capri, and then we will be back in Hollywood again with the full-on festival. But it's still going to be great here. We're going to see some great films. We're going to give out some great awards to some great filmmakers. And uh, it's quite an honor to have me here. And uh, I love it. And thank you, Pascal. We love you. Wish you were here, but we'll see you soon. <music>
there'll be a network pre-show. And then following that stage, I'm the first position on the red carpet. And then after me, there will be, I think, 11 more slots, but we will all be spaced seven feet apart and the stars will be placed seven feet from us and our camera people who are running our cameras will be seven feet behind me. Also, we are very safely distanced from one another, even though we've all been tested, but it's just, again, making sure that every protocol is, is followed carefully so we're all safe on that red carpet. So I have a question, George. This is Dan McVicker. The uh, performances of the songs, uh, where are those going to take place? Are those going to be at the Union Station or another location? They're going to be in another location. Now, all those songs you're going to see on the network pre-show, which in L.A. will air between 3.30 and 5. I don't know if they'll all be together, if they'll be distanced for that 90 minutes that they're doing their show. Four of the five performances um, will have been recorded, if they haven't already, uh, at the new family pavilion at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. So it's that gorgeous glass rotunda. That's where you're going to see four of the five. But one of them is an international song called Husevik from the movie Eurovision. And that particular song will be performed from Husevik, Iceland, and then aired here all over the world. So, uh, Georgia, going back to the, the main issue you're here, we have uh, here the maestro uh, Bobby Moresco, Oscar winner for Crash, who is originally from Liguria. Where are you originally from, Italy? Me, me and my, my family in Italy would be, um, uh, there's an argument, as I think happens in some families, but part of the family says Rome and part of the family says Abruzzo. Is that it? Did I get that right? It's your family. I know, but they are, they are. You know, it's like at a dinner table when they argue about where they're from. So I would say, I'll say Rome to be kinder and it's an easier word for me to say. Um, George, Robert uh, before was scared that this year will be a lot of politics uh, in the Oscar. What do you think? Well, I was in a, a news conference about what they're trying to do this year and that we, we were hearing from producers. And I think that because, I think there's gonna be more time for people to speak, but what they ask of the celebrities or, or various people who might win an Oscar to really just speak from their heart. And they wanna make it a movie about motion pictures. And, and so there's this whole kind of mystery about what that all means. And I guess we'll figure it out once it starts, the show starts going on but they are asking for personal stories. They, once again, and Robert, I'm sure knows this, they beg you not to do a laundry list of people that helped you because you get a speech going on and they thank the director, then the producer, and then the co-star, and then the wardrobe person and the makeup person and their publicist and their manager and agent. And nobody at home wants to hear that. But this time, I don't think they're limiting them to 45 seconds. So they've spoken to them, I'm told individually, or at least they've gotten letters saying, this is what we'd love you to do. Have a story ready. Have a story ready about your life, your career, why this matters, that kind of thing, I believe. So I'm hoping that it's not going to get political. I'm sure it will at some point. Every award show seems to. But I think the goal is to embrace the love of movies. And so if that happens, it could be a wonderful night. We don't, I mean, this is a, this is a mystery year, as I'm sure you know, so I don't know, but that's my, that's my hope anyway. Well, I hope it's I not hope. politicized. George Pernacchio, can you hear me? Um, I can hear you. Yes, I, I was asking you a question. Did you, did you, did you I, I, sorry, no, I was saying uh, that uh, um, we are talking about another America in front of uh, the one that we were used to know. So we, we heard that the Archlight Theater is closed, the MC has some problem, and uh, uh, I mean, it's, uh, Los Angeles is a uh, little Christ. What do you think? Uh, we are in, in trouble as theaters, I think, in Los Angeles right now. You're right. The Arclight Pacific theaters are the ones that are closing here, and the 
Um, Cinerama Dome is a is a legendary place in Hollywood. It's a landmark, and that's I think what is attached to the arc light in Hollywood. And there is a lot of thought that there will be someone that comes forward, buys the Cinerama Dome, or buys that theater to keep it in operation. I don't really know how well um, the Cinerama Dome is do was doing before all this happened, but. Every when it seemed that we interviewed for our news had a story about going to the Cinerama Dome and could remember the movie that they saw there once upon a time. So I don't think you're going to see the Cinerama Dome close for good. I think there'll be somebody who wants their history lives. And there's a lot of money in this, I think, for a group or a person even to keep it alive. Yes. Gina, will you go back to New Amsterdam? I feel like that storyline was interesting for me to watch. Oh, thank you. You know, it was just starting to get good. I mean, I, I kind of did a couple to get to the juicy part. And then, of course, everything got shut down. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to continue because everything changed so much. So I don't, I'm not sure. It was just too bad because it was they were writing me a really good one. But, yeah. you know. What's your feeling listening to all these stories? Well, I think we're we're all experiencing a little bit of the same things, I think, because I feel isolation. I've been working from home um, for more than a year now, occasionally going out. This is the first time this week that I am actually with a crew, and I'm stationed every afternoon now at Union Station covering the Oscars. But this is the first time all that time. I find that when I find see somebody in person, conversations are lasting longer, maybe putting me behind schedule a little bit because it's just so nice to have the interaction. You know, we went out to dinner the other night, uh, my wife and I, and we hadn't really been out to dinner much. And we walked into a restaurant and none of the workers had on a mask. And, we, and the cooks didn't and the waitress didn't. And we just couldn't stay. So I did feel even though I'm back safe. George, so, that was George, that's in LA because all the I've gone out recently, but the theater the, the restaurants are all everyone's masked up. I mean you went to mask really. I know. Inside, so, that's crazy. I know. So there's a place was, you can read online. That was hard to believe. I would have left too. <laughs> Yeah. Roberto Stabile. Il Pistile, they, they're wearing masks. Il Roberto Stabile, in this panel today, we're missing another great friend of us, uh, another Oscar winner, another amazing screenwriter, uh, Steven Zellian. When was the last yes. time you visited Italy? Uh, it, was a couple, it was a couple of years ago. Uh, it was on a cruise on Viking. And I remember one of the highlights, and this is going to sound weird because people thought it was going to be a goofy tour, but they do a Godfather tour. And you get to go <laughs> there um, where Michael proposed at that play, at that little, I don't know, bodega. And then they take you to the church where he got married. It was a beautiful walking <laughs> tour. And we also got to Rome a lot more. You can get these great tours where they have special... Uh, permit drive right up to something so i i love going to italy uh, and i have several more um places to still see so that's gonna be part of um more travels um pascal i am late for um a station oscar meeting as i yes, look at the so, clock so thank you so much gonna... georgia i love you you are uh, an, a great friend thank you really so much it was a and uh, you're seeing these beautiful pictures of Los Angeles, uh, how it's transforming for these Oscars, but it's also seeing how Los Angeles has transformed. You know, I arrived there oh, a few years ago, and it was already transforming. But Union Station was where people arrived with their suitcases in the 20s and 30s, a, a century ago, uh, to come to Hollywood to make their own way. And we also see the Chinese Theater, which was there in the 20s and 30s, but also the May Company there at Wilshire and Fairfax. Art Deco, you see the facade is Art Deco. That's how it was constructed, as the big May Company department store. But that was acquired years ago by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and transformed uh, into this new century by Renzo Piano. Yes, and uh, also thanks to the donation of so many 
people uh, who really cares about uh, the future uh, museum. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Savan. Yes, I'm I'm, Savan. I, I'm Savan, who actually is a very good friend of, of our uh, honorary president, Tony Renis, and uh, David Foster. Always uh, having Savan. Uh, also like very much Peppino Di Capri. I can tell you that uh, Mr. <laughs> Savan once uh, flew all over from Capri, our music hero, Peppino Di Capri, in order to have uh, him playing at his birthday. And th this is a story <laughs> that uh, you might laugh, uh, but it was very funny. You know, every single summer, huge people from uh, all over the world keep uh, coming uh, with the day yacht uh, in the Naples Bay, in the Salerno Bay, uh, Capri, Positano, Amalfi, Sorrento, Ischia, and then uh, Ravello, and then the Cilento. And uh, among these yachts, there is Mr. Saban yacht, with, uh, which normally carry on uh, David Foster, his, his wife, uh, Paul Marciano, the famous uh, guest uh, uh, creator, and his um, wife Mareva, and many, many others. And uh, sometimes they stop in Capri, and sometimes their trip uh, is just uh, in the same days uh, when uh, Peppino Di Capri, this uh, famous uh, music hero uh, that was uh, also performing with the Beatles uh, when he was a young fellow, is an Italian icon, monumental, like Tony, Tony Bennett for America, so it was very funny that uh, the Mr. Saban uh, kept get to uh, Peppino Di Capri beautiful uh, house uh, up uh, on the uh, hill of Capri, 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 the Americans say. And so they get to this party for his birthday. So the, the emotion they got, so Mr. Saban wanted Peppino Di Capri to flew all over. I don't know if uh, my people has uh, the image of Peppino Di Capri. You have, you have a Peppino Di Capri? It was Anna Praderio TV service of uh, um, the, uh, the TG Cinque for a while ago. However, no problem. Um, we have, uh, we, uh, I talk about uh, uh, this because uh, um, before we uh, saw a lot of the museum uh, that is restored by many uh, investors, including Mr. Saban. And uh, you know who's going to open? In September, the, 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 the well, museum. They, they had to look for a myth. They had to look for somebody that represented cinema in a, in a very powerful way. There, there's really only one choice. There is only one choice. The one and only? Sophia Loren. So we have uh, some uh, footage uh, by uh, Sophia Loren uh, for the Capri Hollywood Festival, past edition, when, when we were the first uh, to honor uh, the Life Aid movie and, of course, uh, the Diane Warren, uh, Laura Pausini, and Nicolò are the masterpiece uh, song. Uh, this, the song, of course, is seen. Which so Laura will be performing also for the Oscar broadcast. They're performing the songs in the dome by Renzo Piano. But uh, let's see what uh, Miss Sofia Loren told us. Oh, let's, see, let's hear this. Amore e serenità. <laughs> Grazie. ricevere questi premi. La storia della vita davanti a sé e il personaggio di Madame Rosa sono entrati nel mio cuore il momento in cui ho letto la sceneggiatura. Ma non solo per l'importante messaggio di tolleranza, empatia e umanità, ma anche perché racconta una bellissima storia di amore e amicizia tra due persone che in superficie tutto separa ma che sono in realtà legati non solo attraverso il dolore e la sofferenza, ma soprattutto la speranza e la resilienza. Questo anno è giunto al suo termine. È stato un anno difficile. È stato un anno di perdite e dolori. Ma è stato anche un anno in cui abbiamo visto persone aiutarsi e tirarsi su nel più bello e inaspettato dei modi. Questo film parla di questi momenti di umanità tra di noi, questi momenti di compassione, di amore, tutto ciò che ci unisce e ci rende più forti. Grazie. Grazie per questo riconoscimento. Vi auguro a tutti un anno pieno di luce, amore e serenità.
live from Hollywood. What a, what a joy to be here with Daniel the Quicker uh, for this uh, opportunity. The Los Angeles, Italia Film Fashion and Art Festival keep going on until Saturday night uh, at the Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard and on the platforms eventive.org and mymovies.it. We have uh, so many great uh, movies uh, um, and also TV series uh, distributed in the world by Raicom, which actually the public uh, television company who distributes worldwide so much movies. And of course, we have all the major uh, movies of uh, the past year, including uh, Pinocchio, who actually is up for two Oscars, and uh, Eden, Eden Away, uh, and uh, Bad Tales, who are up for so many David Donatello, which are uh, the Italian Oscar. So I want to go back with you, yes. uh, Daniel, to this year feeling. And uh, by the time you talk, I want to show uh, our audience uh, what was the walk uh, of uh, no, the, the walking of the red carpet last year, Oscar, with uh, Mr. Joaquin Phoenix, who actually uh, was uh, uh, up and he won the Oscar for the Joker. Look he, with his wife Mara Rooney. Look at and this publicist Susan Patricola. You see, J Joaquin was a lot of people. Nobody was uh, uh, imagining, uh, even considering the possibility of a pandemic at that time. You last year, Oscar on February 9, 2020. So, yeah, you could never see that space now. And it's strange to see uh, uh, people that close together with Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, it's strange to see everybody together. It certainly won't be that way this year. There'll be a lot of uh, distancing, a lot less people, but they'll still celebrate cinema. And that's really what the Oscars are all about. So we're going to close this uh, section with uh, last year Oscar, uh, the, a little kid that really conquered <laughs> the old world. Uh, I was uh, thrilled to meet him. And uh, the minute uh, I met him, I became a good friend. And also he was uh, my guest at the Ischia Global mm -hmm. Festival last summer in uh, uh, in, um, in Ischia, of course. Uh, he is one of the, the best uh, a future a, talent. A tremendous young man. Yes. I got to meet him at the Torino Film Festival where they also they screened the film. And uh, he's a great talent, but a really n nice young man. So Roman Griffin Davis, uh, the star leader of Jojo Rabbit, uh, let's see, on the red carpet of uh, the 2020 Oscar. Now, say hi to Italy. Hi, Italy. Then we wait for you. Uh, you have to come soon. Yes, uh, yes. We want you yes, to visit us. I love us. Italy. You love Italy? I love Puglia. I love Italy. Puglia? Yeah. Oh, great. The best holiday in the world. Though. Yeah, where? Where in Puglia? Uh, Osturi? Osturi. I, I, like, I, like, I like the south a lot. There is uh, also the animal. There is also yes, the, oh. I love it. So go, go, yes. boy, go. Yeah,